Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. Well, it's currently about 36 degrees there at Yellowstone National Park. This is why we have a lot of low hanging fog over the the Norris Junction Old Faithful area. Yeah, all that hot air rising up, meeting the cold air above, yeah, creating a fog. Found some interesting information about the earthquake swarm that's currently happening there at uh, Yellowstone Lake. The earthquake swarm has been continuing. Here we have Lake Butte and the other monitor for Little West Thumb. Now you know there's a fault line at the bottom of the lake where there's been spreading um, as the lake rises from the introduction of new magma to recharge uh, Yellowstone. Um, we got uplift and the lake has been spreading both east and to west. This recent earthquake swarm which has been occurring uh, through this area of Yellowstone Lake which is not far from the Sour Creek and the Mallard Lake Resurgent Dome. Here we have the two resurgent domes, the Mallard Lake Resurgent Dome and the Sour Creek Resurgent Dome all marked out in dots. And we have uplift that was documented back in uh, between 1923 and 1975, which goes all the way down the uplift um, to the Lewis Lake area. Here we got West Thumb, which is an old caldera that erupted, which created the uh, western extension of the lake. And here we have the main part of the lake itself. Taking note of the lines of uplift, extending both north and south and the Lewis Lake area. And here we have all the recent earthquakes. Yeah, the magnitude 2s have been continuing, but uh, USGS has been downgrading those earthquakes. And I'll bring it in to this location. Here we got Lewis Lake and the earthquake swarm. And I'll bring this up so you can see here we have the Sour Creek Resurgent Dome. I have three monitors. We got Little West Thumb, or Little Thumb, which is the West Thumb. Yellowstone Lake, the monitor, it's a borehole, a very deep uh, monitor that's in the ground, about 500 feet under the ground, and then Lake Butte. Now there's many fault lines going through Yellowstone Lake. Over here is Lake Butte. And we have a fault line that goes down through here uh, past Frank Island. There's also another fault line um, through this narrow area. Probably was formed uh, with the outside edge of the brittle fracture zone of the West Thumb Caldera. One of the scientists there, or that used to be there, was Jamie Farrell, and he did research about the earthquakes at Yellowstone Lake. He found that the earthquake swarms that had happened in the past, and this was documenting researching the earthquake swarm from 2010. He found that the earthquake swarm was created by magma, new magma being injected about six miles down uh, for the recharging of the Yellowstone Super Caldera. The earthquake swarm always started very deep. And as they continued, the earthquakes got shallower and shallower in a sequence of steps. They were not a constant swarm of earthquakes, but occurred in steps. They would have a, um, a swarm of earthquakes that would pause, would have another swarm of earthquake and pause. And then as they worked, the magma worked its way up closer uh, to the surface of the earth. Yeah, they would have another earthquake swarms. Never during his research did he find that it was followed by a large earthquake there at Yellowstone Lake. The largest earthquake that I believe was recorded at Yellowstone Lake was about a magnitude 0 0.4. Jamie Farrell, his conclusion was that it appeared these earthquake swarms appeared to be associated with magma injected 1 to 5 miles in a succession of migrating magma fronts that incrementally solidify and fracture at its brittle edges. 
Here he says that the Yellowstone earthquake swarm follows a stepwise migration. The swarm evolution exhibited bursts of daily multiplets earthquakes. And here he showed how they were getting shallower and shallower. Here he says where the earthquake swarm at Yellowstone Lake was from the intrusion of the magma coming up. And it says each intrusion step takes a relatively longer time compared to total earthquakes. So they know they have a crack there at the bottom of Yellowstone Lake. Probably a dike intrusion, which is about um, seven inches wide. Here's where he talks about the dike intrusion, allowing this magma to rise up and then heating the uh, thermal waters above. They don't know if the dike intrusion of the magma is either basalt or if it's rhyolite. And he talks about the different temperatures of the different types of magma that could be coming up. They believe it's rhyolite. And that's the statement right there in his report. A rhyolite magma solution presents both advantages of reasonable flux values and reasonable duck, duck excuse me, dike width. In the discussion, we prefer this later solution, especially because of this consistency with a rapid migration rate and slight ground deformation. Rhyolite would be the worst type of magma to, become, to be coming up there at Yellowstone Lake. The absolute worst because it's highly explosive. So going back to these charts, I'm going to go back another four hours. And I'm going to show you um, these earthquakes that have been occurring there. Let me bring this down. Here we got Little West Thumb and we got Lake Butte. Two completely opposite sides of the lake showing these earthquakes, which is, let me show you this one here, which is a series of earthquakes um, at 12, 12 and 50 seconds. And it carries over until oh, 12, 13 and 50 seconds. Let me come over here. This is the most recent series that uh, USGS is not reporting, of course. And these are marked in red, meaning that they know they did occur. The reason I'm picking out these two that are marked in red is because they show up both at uh, Lake Butte and West Thumb. And this is uh, 30, what, 38 minutes after midnight, universal time. See that right there? So I'm going to go ahead another four hours. See how this earthquake here shows up at all three monitors. This one shows up at uh, um, Yellowstone Lake right there. Let me pull it over for you. There, There is multiple earthquakes at multiple monitors that USGS is not reporting. And then I'll pull ahead another four hours. And let me pull this over for you. And I'll go back another four hours because I want to get to that midnight time right there. There's that one, which is this series of earthquakes that I'm showing you here. Now we have more marked in red. Um, let's see, 2117, which would be this activity. Oops, excuse me. Right through here. And we can see the depth of the melt. We got definitely two lines of melt here. All right, that's 14. There we go. And this is what it was showing when I pulled the files just a little while ago. It's currently almost 11 o'clock Central Daylight Time. All right, tilt meters, uplift meters, or deformation. This is Grant, which is on the um, western side of Yellowstone Lake, which is up over here in this location. And Grant has been showing a lot of activity, a lot of small micro-earthquakes, oh, probably for a couple of years. Top measures north, 
bottom measures east for the last seven days each dot would be an earthquake yeah that's a lot okay and then this is for the last 30 days and this is set at two micro radians it would probably be off the disk that they would have to reset it the monitor for yellowstone lake again this one this monitor which is a borehole a deep well which is by the fishing bridge let me pull this out that monitor is up over here which is the outlet for the uh, yellowstone river and it flows into the missouri river this is the last seven days i'll pull this over so you can see that right there seven days top is north bottom is east all the earthquakes that that monitor has recorded now this one is set at two micro radians big difference between grant huh and then the last 30 days and then we'll jump over to the norris geyser basin there's two monitors there this is a borehole uh 205 top measures north bottom measures east for the last seven days all the earthquakes in the norris junction area and then we got the last 30 days let me pull this over too so you can see that top is north bottom is east they're measuring the two different directions and here they're measuring the direction that the magma is flowing under the ground x would be north and y would be east even though the uplift if you're looking at the horizon uh, the norris junction area would be rising in the west another monitor they have for the norris junction area seven days borehole 950 again x is north top is north bottom is east for the last seven days and it's just mostly in the up you know straight up and then the last 30 days see how it's just breathing now they do know that the magma as it comes in to the caldera it moves across under the lake and then up to the norris junction and then to the madison river area they have two different locations where the magma comes in one from the snake river plateau and then the other one um, down south from the, the Gulf of California. Yeah, that's a long ways for magma to be rising up. Here is the chart for the Madison River area. Borehole 207 for the last seven days. Top is north. Look at all the activity that's going on. Took a breath there. Um, oh, between the 18th and 19th. And then each dot would be an earthquake. Yeah, that's a lot of earthquakes in just one week that they are not reporting. And then the last 30 days. See how the uh, north area come, goes in spurts and the activity. And look how it's breathing. Look at that. And this is set at um, one micro radian. See how it's in spurts? Boom, 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 boom. USGS is only reporting 17 earthquakes in the last week in this location. We got one by the border of Idaho and Montana, a 0 0.4. And yeah, they're downgrading these greatly. A 0 0.4, or a 0 0.5, excuse me. That's a Madison, near the Madison River area. A 0 0.7 by Hebben Lake, um, a 1.7. Notice where that one's at? Let me zoom in there. Yeah, here we got Lewis Lake, and we got uh, Shoshun Lake. Yeah, that was actually, let me show you that one. At the Norris, no, excuse me, at the Old Faithful area, it came in as a 2.08 and they got uh, two monitors it looks like there um, HHE1 
and this other one they have posted and this is manual a 2.8 purple mountain they always come in higher at purple mountain um, 2.66 and 2.17 at little west thumb it came in as a 1.79 automatic by the computer purple mountain 2.33 and another one at purple mountain 1.81 but they decided on 1.7 just one of many examples that i could show you how they're downgrading these earthquakes greatly besides not reporting them and these here are what happened today so is there another fault line do they have another dike intrusion um, going on down here where all these earthquakes have been occurring and continue to occur they do know that they do have a fault line up over here that's seven inches wide with rhyolite more than likely the culprit that's causing these earthquakes yeah rhyolite is very bad and a live shot of old faithful so that's all i have for you right now any thoughts or comments or questions please put it down below um thank you for watching i really appreciate it have a great week this week today is monday and it is the 21st of september of 2020 yeah it's been one heck of a year uh, please stay safe and i will talk to you later god bless you bye